Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, that last part that I just read about kind of the, the damnation, the burning of the chaff and so on, it didn't sound like much, much like good news to me. Uh, much of what John speaks uh, is hard to categorize as good news. Imagine if I, as a preacher, approached you and said, you brood of vipers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? But what if I said, you sinful people. I got it right, didn't I? Jesus didn't come into the world to save the righteous. I'm not sure where they are, but they're taken care of in some other way. But for those of us who are unrighteous, for those of us who sin, For those of us who know ourselves to be guilty of not living out our identity as children of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, for those of us who fall short of perfection, Jesus was born and died and was raised for us. John's word is a word of condemnation. It's a word of condemnation for anyone who fails to live up to God's expectations. It's especially, John's message is especially aimed at those who seem to be self-righteous, who take an attitude that they are in some way better than someone else. When the reality is that as St. Paul says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We didn't gather here this morning to celebrate what wonderful people we are, although we are. There's no question about that. But that's not why we gathered. We gathered to hear the word of God, a word that comes both as law and gospel, both judgment and redemption. We came to hear the word. We came to receive the word in our hands, on our lips in the sacrament of Christ's presence. We came to experience the word, that is God's love, in the fellowship of God's people. Fellow sinners, striving, striving to be more like our master Jesus, but always falling short. But we don't despair because we know that ultimately it's not, the question is not about our faithfulness. It's about God's faithfulness. It's not about whether I keep my promise to God. It's about whether God will keep his promise to me and to you.
to clothe us in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's the reason that Jesus came into the world. The reason that he gave up divine majesty to be born a human. Our flesh and blood. And why? John the evangelist tells us so clearly. For God so loves the world. Because of God's love, God embraces faulty people, broken people, struggling people, sinful people like you and me. And carries us, carries us always in that strong yet gentle embrace in which he held us in baptism. Again, as Paul tells us, nothing in all creation can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. We're here to hear good news But in order to understand the good news about our redemption in Jesus Christ, we also need to hear the word of judgment. The word that reminds us that we cannot, as Luther says, we cannot by our own will approach the throne of God but only through the death and resurrection of Jesus, only through our inclusion in the life of Christ can we stand before God and accept and receive the promise over and over and over again, the promise of forgiveness, the promise of eternal life with God. I know you didn't all come just for the cookies today. Maybe one or two of you. You came for the word. The word spoken. The word sung. The word experienced in our communion with one another and our communion with God. The word made flesh in the sacrament. Together we gather around word and sacrament to recognize who we are. But even more importantly, to recognize whose we are. In Jesus' name, amen.